On this episode of Design to the Nines, I'm gonna walk you through the process of taking our kitchen from what it looked like when we purchased the home to what it looks like now and how I saved money doing it myself along the way. So let's get started. So I'm gonna just address right up front that while I do classify this kitchen as a small kitchen, having worked in the design industry, I know it's not the smallest kitchen on the planet, but it is still on the smaller side and we really lack storage on a whole in our entire house because it was built as a vacation rental. So storage is not needed when you're traveling. <laughs> but since this is our primary residence, we, we kind of struggle with some storage issues. So I'm gonna address some of that later when I get to the decorating portion, but I wanted to start out with where we began. And this is what it looked like when we purchased the home. It was rather plain, rather bland, it had these butter yellow walls. What we did have going for us were some beautiful ebony colored cabinets and granite countertops, which we really love. And so we had uh, some good bones to begin with, but I wanted to take it up a notch and get it out of that builder grade status. And so that's what we've done. The first thing that we did is paint the walls. The paint was really in rough shape in the entire house and there's still a few areas that I have not addressed yet. When you're building multiple houses at once, which is what you do in these mass communities, they go with like the lowest bidder, they use the cheapest paint and they just get it up. And so that's kind of what I was dealing with is just a really poor paint job. I didn't love the color. It was kind of a butter yellow, which I just didn't really love. Even though I went with something kind of neutral still, it just has a little bit more depth to it and I went with Revere Pewter on the wall. I found that this is a really good neutral color that can go with a lot of different palettes. It's kind of gray, it's kind of beige, it's kind of somewhere in the middle and so it really complements a lot of different color schemes. One thing you can really do to upgrade a kitchen and make it feel a little bit more polished is adding a backsplash. I've done subway tile backsplashes in a few of my homes and I've even used beadboard as a backsplash. And this time I wanted to do something a little different and here's why. First of all, I felt like this was a very builder grade kitchen and I didn't love the kind of gold colored granite countertops. I mean, they're not the worst. <laughs> they're just not what I would have selected if I were starting from scratch. But the house is only a few years old and I felt like it would be wasteful to replace this. Would you have ripped out the granite? <laughs> Let me know if you would have ripped out the granite and just started from scratch. I wanted to bring the brightness of a white kitchen in. So I knew I wanted to do a white tile somehow, but I wanted to do something a little bit different than a subway tile backsplash. And then I came across this tile, which is this kind of arabesque tile with a bronzy or a gold tone to it. It's such a pretty tile. And what I really liked about it is I felt like it brightened up my kitchen and the gold pulled the gold from the countertops and kind of it all worked together and it really kind of brightened up the kitchen and customized it in a beautiful way. And I ended up installing the tile myself and I'm gonna walk you through how I did that. Briefly, I start out by removing the six inch granite backsplash that was existing so that I can have a more seamless, uninterrupted look from top to bottom. Now I used a heat gun to help, but you may still have some drywall damage like me. So just try and be as careful as you can to minimize this. It's not the end of the world. It's just gonna add a little time to our project. Then we remove any remaining residue on the counters with a flat edge blade. So I patched the walls. I let it dry overnight so it's nice and sturdy. Then I sanded it down to smooth it out, as well as I sanded on top where it had been painted. Then I started in the most challenging area, which was the raised bar that drops down into the regular counter height area. This was particularly tricky because there was also a bull nose and the tile is a unique shape to begin with. So 
if this had been done with like a subway tile or a square tile, it would have been much simpler, but because of the unique shape of our tile, coupled with the bull nose and then the drop, it just made it particularly challenging, but we succeeded. Then we unscrewed all of the outlets and making sure that there was no power to them. You can get a little zinger if you're not careful. Working with a wet saw is not as scary as you think. You just need to be really aware and really careful. Make sure you cover your eyes with protective eyewear and wear a face mask. And if the noise gets to you, earplugs are not a bad idea. We just make all of our cuts, then we applied our tile to the wall using the white mastic, not the gray stuff. The gray stuff I found will drop off the wall much easier and it is much harder to clean up. <laughs> so that's why I like the white mastic for this application. Once your tile is installed, you let that sit up for about 24 hours and then you go back and grout, making sure to clean all of the excess off. And when it's dry, there will be a little bit of a haze. You go back and polish the tiles with a little window cleaner and a flat edge blade if necessary. Now, this tile really dressed up the kitchen and took it from builder grade to gourmet. So this has just been kind of an abbreviated version of how I went about tiling the backsplash. If you want a full tutorial on how I installed this tile, I will link all of the full tutorials in the description box below. Honestly, with the tile backsplash, I really like the granite countertops now because it all works together. What do you think? Now, right across from the kitchen, I have this big wall that I added some batten board trim and molding on. I started by removing the baseboards and outlet covers. Then I covered the entire wall in masonite, an extremely affordable type of plywood. I did this so I could create a smooth finish on my heavily textured Florida walls. Now, you could definitely skim coat your walls, but I found this technique to be a lot faster and gave me fantastic results. Once I had the walls covered in the masonite, my goal is to cover up most of the seams with a board and batten. But there was one seam that I still needed to fill in with joint compound and smooth out. Then I placed all of my molding in the pattern that I had predetermined and used a nail gun to make quick work of it. You know I love my power tools, it just makes me feel so powerful. <laughs> then you're going to fill in any nail holes, sand them out smooth, and caulk all of the seams to make sure they are nice and tight. You cannot skip these steps as this is what really makes it have that professional feel. Then all it needed was some prime and paint. I just love this and it really ups the ante a lot and hiring out trim and molding can be very expensive but adding trim and molding really can add a more luxurious feel more high-end feel and we did this for hardly anything now if you watched my decorating mistake video you know that i talk about the fact that it's okay to take some time decorating a room it's how you save the most money and that way you make really good choices after time and kids and cooking and all of those kinds of things my cabinet started to look really grody really disgusting really beat up and i was like maybe i'm gonna have to paint these after all but if you saw it in my last episode, I show you how to go about restoring your cabinets to like new condition without having to sand them down or paint them. Now, if you want to paint your cabinets, by all means, do it. I love a beautiful painted cabinet, but I'm just not at the point where I'm ready to do that yet. So I decided to do a cabinet refresh instead, which was really a deep cleaning of the cabinets with a special brush that worked amazing. Before you start, you need to remove all your hardware first and attach the special brush to a drill and you just go to town. I cover this in more detail in my last week's episode and I talk about all of the specific types of cleaners and products I used and it just really, really worked well. 
Now, after you do this thorough scrubbing, I used a cabinet cream to seal and renew the shine of the cabinets, and I wiped that on with a microfiber cloth. Then we needed to take care of all the nicks and worn down areas on the cabinet, and I used a special trick to do that on my ebony color cabinets. I also took the opportunity to add new brass hardware to the cabinets, giving it a more contemporary upgraded feel. When it was all said and done, the transformation was stunning. They actually ended up looking even better than when we bought the place. I am so glad that I did this. And now look at them, they look amazing. They do like them and I didn't have to paint them after all. Saving me a lot of time and definitely a lot of money. <laughs> so now that we've painted the walls, added trim, restored our cabinets, added tile, changed out the hardware to something more beautiful, now it's time to decorate and do the fun stuff. But if you have a small kitchen, you know that decorating is not completely just for aesthetics. You need some functionality in it because a lot of times the things that you would tuck away in a larger kitchen, like a mixer for example, have to be out on display because you just simply don't have the room to store them. So next up, we're gonna decorate our kitchen with aesthetics in mind and functionality. In an ideal world, I would have a nice, big, beautiful butler's pantry, hashtag goals, but I don't. So I take this little area and turn this into my toasting station. And I add a basket to hold our phones as it is also a charging station as well. And I set out beautiful jadeite dishes that I collect that hold my butter and sugar, but look pretty enough to be displayed. Now, down the road, I may make some covers for these appliances, but for the most part, this corner is tucked out of sight, so it made the most sense to use it in this manner. So here's a little bit more of that jadeite color. It's not actually jadeite, but we're gonna start on the right-hand side of the stove over here. And when you're decorating in a small kitchen, sometimes things need to do dual duty. So this is a scale. It is functional and it does work. And I just have some fake lemons in it here right now, but a lot of times I'll grab some real lemons and I'll just toss them on top of the fake lemons. You can't tell the difference. So we're gonna stick that back here. Super cute. Sometimes when you are decorating in a small space, you don't have a lot of cabinet room and besides you use a lot of these things all the time anyways. So I've got things like my olive oil and apple cider vinegar and my cooking sprays, as well as my um, utensils that I use a lot of the time. So rather than peppering them across the counter, you get a cute little bin basket or you can use a wood box like I've done here and you put them all in one location and then you put it real close to where you're cooking so it's convenient for you and it's all there ready to go and it looks a little less chaotic so that's why I like that and I might put like some kind of fun vinyl on that too so who knows just a couple of final accessories to kind of just finish this out is I have a little cute little honey jar that you can put actual honey in there I have not yet <laughs> guilty but that would actually be a functional yet beautiful piece if you have to use something it might as well be a pretty container so that would be perfect to put my honey in and then just a little topiary to just kind of add a little interest and make it look a little less functional and a little bit more designed and that will complete this area when you're working in a small space all of a sudden the real estate on the top of the refrigerator becomes really important but instead of lining a whole bunch of stuff and cluttering up the space what i found works really nicely is putting some cute decorative bins or baskets up there so in my case i've got these i've had them for a while and i just put snacks and chips and all of that in these bins so it's not taking up cabinet space and it's not looking ugly on top of my fridge. So 
Then we've got functional yet cute. So that's a good little tip on how to store things on top of your refrigerator without looking cluttered. All right, so now we're gonna work on the left side of my stove and make this functional yet attractive as well. The, the way to do this is again, mixing some stylistic things as well as functional things. So I picked this pedestal up at a thrift store for two dollars you can see and it will be a perfect place to display some of our functional yet beautiful items as well so i like to put this right next to the stove and at the back here i've got some different flavor balsamic vinegars that we use a lot and i'm just gonna set those back here and to add a little extra height and some greenery we're gonna add just like a little sprig of greenery right there and then i have another greenery i probably picked this up at tj max or ross for very inexpensive you see these all over the place and I'm just gonna tuck that in here and then again these are some antique jadeite salt and pepper shakers and so we're gonna put those close to where you're cooking and this is a functional timer as well I normally would try to avoid putting my mixer out on my countertop but I use this a lot and I really don't have a place to store it so it goes on the countertop so we kind of have this tall, awkward space right in here, and we're gonna address that here in just a second. But first I wanna talk about grouping like things together. So I have a couple of cutting boards. So instead of peppering them throughout the room, again, you want to group them together and add a little bit of interest with varying heights. So what I like to do is I put this one upright and that gives a little height. Then I'll put this one kind of long ways so you kind of got an l shape and then i tuck this one in right over here and then to add a little bit of greenery and life into a room because i think greenery adds a whole bunch of life into a room now i kill potted plants so usually mine are silk or fake not real but they still kind of give a little bit of life even though they are fake <laughs> so we'll just tuck that in there and then i have this topiary tree. I got it on clearance at a uh, TJ Maxx or Home Good that was kind of going out of business. And then we're just going to tuck that back into the corner and kind of balance out that space. And then I've got a clock that we're going to hang over here so we know what time it is and for beautification purposes that I got at Ross on clearance for like $16. All right, so one of our last little areas is I just have a paper towel holder right here. Simple, but I need it all the time, so I just leave it out. And then over here, I've just taken a little cupcake stand that I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance for $2. And I put just a little plant in a terracotta pot. And then of course, I always have my Antique Candle Company candles right here burning because they smell amazing. Now this one is a fall harvest. I'm telling you guys, it is unbelievable. If you could jar up fall and put it in a candle with all of the yummy scents. That's what you have in this one. It's Antique Candle Company, I just love their candles. Their scents are really rich and they smell so good. I've never been disappointed in any of the smells, so I really highly recommend them. And if you wanna learn more about Antique Candle Company, I'll put a link for them in the description box below. So I'm taking advantage of this area right here by placing one of these. I don't know what it's called. It's like a rod that has hooks so you, we can store things. And we're just gonna put that there. It's gonna be a decorative element as well as functional. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It was originally $17.99, but 40% off. I think it was around $10 all said and done. And I spray painted the finials, kind of this brass color to kind of mimic some of the other brass features that I have going on in my kitchen from the handles to the backsplash. And all we're gonna do is just center this on here and drill some screws in. Okay, so now that we've got this on securely, we can use these hooks. If we don't need them all, we can remove some of them. But I got this basket off of Amazon and I'll put the link below for it. But I thought we could just, well, first of all, take off the tag. 
hook that basket on there. Yeah, but I thought we could put fruit or something in there. All right, so it looks pretty cute like this, but I have something that I've been trying to find a place for that I picked up on clearance from Michael's for $12, and it is this big, giant kind of, I don't know if it's like a pizza board or a cutting board that has some lettering on it. I thought it would look really cute, kind of tucked in behind here. And then what I'm gonna do to hang this, because I don't think it would hang good all the way out here, so I want it to kind of tucked in behind. So since I didn't have a D-ring on hand, a little hack for you is taking the top off of a soda can and screwing it to what you're wanting to hang, and you have a perfect hook to hang it on, a nail or a screw. Talk about a great trash to treasure. While I do still dream of my beautiful white light and airy kitchen, farmhouse in style. In the meantime, I am really happy with my end result here. I think it's beautiful. I think it's classy and timeless, modern and contemporary, functional and aesthetic, and you can't go wrong. Plus I saved thousands and thousands of dollars doing it myself along the way, taking my time, making smart choices, and what more can you ask for? And it's a perfect kitchen for now. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And until next time to all of my DIY Niners, bye.